It is said that animals sacrifice much of their lifespan and vitality for the sake of procreation. There are numerous research studies on animals and insects that have linked sexual activity with decreased lifespan and sexual abstinence with longevity. It is a notable fact that animals, although paired, do not indulge in sexual congress except at such times as the female is in proper condition for conception. Thus their natural vitality is greatly conserved and intensified in their seed, with the result that the magnetic attraction between the seed is much greater, and a larger number of ova are fertilized at each conception. Hence there are usually plural births. Wild animals seem to have an unconscious awareness of the cost of procreation, as they designate times of year in which to mate and abstain during the off-season. The animal's adherence to the laws of nature regarding procreation is something we can learn from. Living in accordance with nature, whether conscious of it or not, is true wisdom. It should be noted there are however a few exceptions to the rule, such as the Japanese macaque monkeys who have been observed to engage in masturbation. It should be noted however that during non-mating seasons even these monkeys did not masturbate to the point of ejaculation. Only during the mating season would they choose to ejaculate their seed. Frederick Misha, a pioneer in the discovery of DNA, observed that salmon have been found to undergo a process of muscular degeneration during their mating period, as the protein and lecithin in the spermatozoa is drawn from the muscles and blood of the fish. Studies on the adder snake have indicated the occurrence of weight loss during mating seasons attributed to sexual secretions. Studies in mealworm beetles have shown that non-mating beetles considerably outlived the mating beetles. In the case of certain insects, the living substance of the male parent is actually drawn from his body and into the body of the female. Naught but the dead shell of the devoted male mate being left. Other writings and research on the study of horses have documented further consequences. When a stallion cohabits with a mare for the first time, after a short vigorous coition, he is apt to fall down in a dead faint which Robinson traces to brain anemia. He mentions one case of a mare falling dead immediately after. If we are to conclude from such studies that procreation can ultimately shorten the lifespan of animals, then what is the consensus for humans? If we go down to the most basic and simple forms of organism, reproduction is affected by fission. The being is essentially divided into separate parts, and each new part forms its own individual consciousness. In 1895, Mercier wrote about how the Gregorina parasite, when reproducing, breaks up and divides into a number of spindle-shaped masses enclosed in a sac. When the sac bursts, each mass develops into its own individual Gregorine. In this example, the act of reproduction causes the entire destruction and disappearance of the parent. He noted that the higher animals and in the human race, this is essentially the same. The parent still persists as an individual, it is true, after the birth of the offspring. The individuality of the parent is not entirely dissipated and lost in the process of reproduction, but still that process is not affected without cost. The whole life of the parent is not lost, it is true, but a part of it is lost. With each reproductive act, the bodily energy is diminished, the capacity for exertion is lessened, the languor and lassitude that follow indicate the strain that has been put upon the forces of the body, the amount of energy that has been abstracted from the store at the disposal of the organism, that our quantity and quality of life force is determined by the energy we possess seems to be the underlying message of this research. With the gift of self-consciousness, we have been given a very powerful choice. We can choose which biological imperative will take precedence. Either we can expend our energy sources for the sake of procreation, or we can save them for the benefit of our own survival.